G'day y'all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. Well, I hope you all had a safe and happy new year. Welcome to 2022. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at Stormfish OS. I uh, was contacted and was asked to have a look at Stormfish OS and, and as always, if I'm ever contacted and asked to take a look at a distro, I'm always only ever too happy to do so. So let's check this out. Um, Stormfish OS is brought to you by Seeker Linux. I think I've heard that name before. Not quite sure who Seeker is. And if I should know, I apologize. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I do know quite a, there's a lot of people in the Linux community, so sometimes it's hard to keep up with who's who. Let's just check out the summary here. We have um, Stormfish OS uh, featuring three different custom respins of KDE Neon, um, two custom spins of XFCE based on Ubuntu, and one Arch XFCE for more modern machines. So features down here, Samba active at the start of boot, cups at start of boot, WSDD added for Windows discovery of Samba shares, land share added to allow communication between Linux and Windows PCs, and the CFS Zen Tweaks Scheduler Manager for CPU increases performance. And then down here we have some project samples, some screenshots there. So I was just uh, going through the website here, looking at some of these tabs. Under reviews we have Fishman Linux. Now I know Fishman Linux. He had a YouTube channel. I think it may have changed, but I think this may be Fishman Linux here. Fishman loves software. Fishman. So he may have changed the name of his YouTube channel. So he's definitely, I think that's him, I'm pretty sure. He says here, I've found that the purpose of these projects are worthwhile. As a member of the dev team, I know that helping others is the most important thing that we can do. We do not do it for the person, but teach them how to do it themselves. So that seems to be some of the philosophy there. And I was uh, contacted as well by this gentleman here, Ricky, I've spoken to Ricky on Total OS today when I was chatting on his channel. Um, you know, when you get a YouTube channel, you find it a little bit more hard to find time to join these guys. But Ricky, Yu-Gi-Oh Master 88, he contacted me. So he's also part of the team as well, I believe. So what we're going to do is have a look at the files. Um, let's go to the ISO. They have the Stormfish OS, Stormfish OS Arch XFCE, Stormfish OS XFCE, which would be the Ubuntu base, uh, Gaming Edition, XFCE Final. So there's two different ones there. KDE Gaming Edition, KDE Office, and KDE Core. So they're all based off of Neon, KDE Neon. And the one we're going to be looking at, which was suggested to me, was the Office Edition. So I've downloaded the Office Edition. That's it there, Stormfish OS KDE version 12 Office Edition. So we're going to be checking that out. So let's load the ISO and let's check out Stormfish OS in VirtualBox. And we're going to uh, boot Stormfish OS Live System. As you can see, it's got uh, KDE Neon there. Here we are on the live desktop of Stormfish OS. Looks like a very traditionally laid out desktop from the start, looks quite nice, so no problem there. Um, we've got to install Storm Stormfish OS here. We've also got install Stormfish OS here, this little green alien down here, and I'm sure we've got it somewhere in the menu as well. Install Stormfish OS. So let's do that. That's install Stormfish OS, and then we'll take a look around. So we'll choose English and continue. English US for my keyboard is correct. Um, I'm not going to download updates while installing, but we will install third party. There's always updates after you install anyway, and I think this just makes the, um, the install go a bit longer. The, now this is the Ubiquiti installer by the looks of it, so it's the Ubuntu installer. So I'm just gonna do a basic erase disk and install Stormfish OS, so let's do that. And it's going to make a ESP boot partition and an EXT4 partition. So it hasn't, hasn't done swap, 
that's fine. We can always do swap later, but it is a virtual box. So I'm not too fussed about that. And let's continue. Perth, Australia is my location. It's gonna pick the defaults here, put in my password and continue. And that is the install complete of Stormfish OS. Um, I think I will continue testing and I will um, shut down. I have tried this a couple of times in the live environment and tried some things out and there's a few um, links on the desktop here as well. But I don't like to look at those things until I've fully installed and updated the system because the live desktop for me is something that you can try out, test and uh, used to the look and feel of the distro itself then you may say to yourself I do like this I might install it and try it out because I like the way the live environment works but as far as testing little things like this on the live environment I don't really like to do that because they may have changed they may have had an update because they something uh, may not have worked when they spun up the ISO and it's been fixed with updates after installation. So sometimes it may not give a true representation of things within the distro on the live environment. So that's why I like to install, update the system and then we go for a look around. Now, mostly overall, if, if things don't really work 100% in the live, you might find after installing and updates, it's the same thing, but um, it's still a better representation than, than uh, second guessing on a live environment. So let's um, shut this down and we'll come back in the, into the uh, fully installed desktop and take a look around. So let's boot up Stormfish OS. All right, so I've just done an EFI install and it looks like it doesn't want to boot. Now I've tried two installs here. Uh, maybe it's an EFI thing. So what I'm going to do is redo, I've done two installs already. I'm gonna do one with just normal uh, legacy boot and see how we go with that. So let's try that instead. And as you can see, the boot screen is different already, especially for an, um, for a legacy boot is always different compared to the EFI boot. EFI boot's normally just a, a black screen. It's not uncommon to get problems like this with EFI in some distros, especially on VirtualBox. <laughs> so here we are on the live desktop of um, Stormfish OS once again in legacy mode. Now I did try double clicking this Stormfish OS here in EFI and it would not start. And it seems to be the case here in Legacy as well. Um, let's just try that again. And doesn't appear to be starting, so we'll click the green alien, which is what I was told to do, is to click the little green head in the panel. So maybe that's why I was told to do that. So off we go again, another install, English US for my keyboard. Um, I'll, down I'll download the updates this time. <laughs> Install third party and let's continue that. And we shall erase disk and install Stormfish OS. And it's going to create two partitions there. And let's continue that. Perth Australia for me. And we'll just go with all the defaults there. Password and let's continue. Okay, so that is the install complete on the legacy uh, side of things. I shall restart now and see if we can boot into the freshly installed desktop. And looks like we have uh, boot options here, which is a good sign. Let's uh, go ahead and boot that one. So here we are in the login screen of Stormfish OS. And here we are on the desktop. There was a little uh, notification there to view update. So there's a little updater here. Let's click on that and it's using Discover. I'm not sure whether to close Discover or not because it seems to be hanging at the updates bit here. I'm not quite sure. It's been there for a little while. 
settings about and updates so it's still fetching it's a fine line between knowing whether you're impatient <laughs> or there's something wrong <laughs> all right from from previous experiences um, discover should not take this long to, just to fetch updates i'm very sure unless they're using oh there we go it's done okay so there we go we've got some updates there so there's a um, gnome application gnome application platform version a couple of gnome things updating there um, let's have a look at the settings here so stormfish os is the default here we've got the brave browser focal main focal main neon focal main sources neon neon so they've got a few other different things in there so maybe that's why the update took so long and you've got flat hub and snaps out of the box as well um, so maybe that's why it took the updates a little while to come through so let's run the updates update all and we'll come back when that's complete okay so that's the updates complete so um, the updates will be installed the next time the system is restarted so let's restart now let's do that first and restart so you can see here it says preparing system update okay so we're back into the boot mode uh, updates been completed so let's enter that let's log into our desktop fully installed updated desktop and here we are back into the desktop of stormfish os um, fully installed completely updated so let's have a bit of a look around first of all i suppose we want to know what's installed on the system um, let's have a look uh, development icon browser graphics a blue recorder never heard of blue recorder document scanner Gwen view KDE image viewer ocular document viewer Zane or X Zane image scanning program internet we have the brave web browser deluge BitTorrent client Firefox and KDE connect applications multimedia we have mpv media player and vlc office we have free office 2021 with the spreadsheet which is called plan maker um, presentation and text maker which is the word processor uh, fax address book as well hp um, utilities ocular document viewer osmo um, I'm just trying to remember what Os Osmo is. I did look at it. Um, forgotten what it is now. <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, PDF split and merge application. And settings, we have Wolfland Builder. That's a, ISO, a system backup tool. I think it builds ISO as well from memory. We got the Synaptic Package Manager installed. And then we have system utilities, beach blit as root, beach bleach bit, um, KDE stuff there, discover dolphin, HP utilities, HTOP, info center, KDE partition manager, console, K wallet manager, LAN share, which is a LAN file transfer, synaptic package manager again, system monitor, USB flasher. And then we've got some utilities here, Emoji Selector, K, which is Advanced Text Editor, K Write Text Editor, and Spectacle, which comes along with the KDE Desktop, and Arc for Archiving, and that's pretty much it. On the desktop, we have some installation instructions. Maybe I should have read that. <laughs> You'll see an Alien Stormfish installer, double click it, double click on it and allow it to execute. Or just click on the alien on the taskbar to begin installation okay so um, and there's 
people here. I was trying to find these names on the website, couldn't find them, but they're in this uh, text editor here. I'd like to thank the following people for helping me get this project off the ground. Ben Fitzpatrick, TJ Wolf, Fishman Loves Linux, AKA Fishman. So I did mention Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu Master Ricky. Um, his name is not here. Um, not sure why that is, but uh, I'm sure he's uh, part of the, um, he, he is definitely part of the contributions anyway. Uh, be on the lookout for upcoming versions a little later on. Your friend Seeker, okay. Now we've got two files here, one's a calendar. Um, I've tried to add um, let's execute that to start with. Enter your name, so I'll just put uh, colon and OK. Choose your event day, so we're on the 2nd of January, so let's choose that. Um, and we'll go 943, 09, um, 43, 43. Done. Um, happy new year. Okay. Now I've tried this, it didn't really work. So I'm not sure whether I'm doing it right or wrong. <laughs> so we've got this one here. Um, w get them, uh, your download link. I'm not really sure what you would download with that, to be honest. Let's just go to Wikipedia Ubuntu. And let's download that and see what happens. Let's copy that paste it into there and OK um, keeps coming up with an extension of mp4 <laughs> I don't know why that is uh, let's go to downloads let's give it a name Ubuntu wiki and that download is finished so let's um, close that let's go to downloads Ubuntu wiki Okay, so that's gone to the wiki page of Ubuntu. Seems as though it's taken out all the graphics. So that's just a quick demonstration on how to use the wgetem. I'm not quite sure exactly if there's a better way of using that. I don't know. Um, let's open that. So it's got .mp4 here. Yeah, I'm really not sure what's going on there. <laughs> I um, thought I might have understood some of that, but no, that's not the case. So let's check out the settings. Uh, let's have a look at appearance. And um, we've got a neon YT global going on here. So there's a neon type uh, theme happening. Um, that's for the global theme. Application style is uh, breeze. Plasma style is also neon YT dash plasma. Window decorations is neon YT dash Aurora. And icons, probably a neon as well, I would have to think. Neon YT dash dark dash icons. So we've got this thing called Osmo. Let's just check that out quickly. Osmo. So it's like a task and contacts and notes and tasks and a calendar. Okay, so I wonder if that um, that little notification I put in there is available in here. It doesn't look like it. Otherwise, you'd think it would be showing. Um, notes, tasks, calendar. No, it's not there. So that's Osmo. And then we've got in system, we have Woofland Builder. It is necessary to close all other windows and unmount any network shares while running Woofland Builder Backup. Please do so now and then click OK when you are ready to continue. I think I'm pretty safe to click OK there. A working directory must be on a drive formatted with a Linux file system. Woofland Builder will create the Woofland Builder working folder in this folder and will not harm any other files or folders. Um, so what are we backing up here? Files to exclude. So you can exclude files, a swap file there. It's got a um, uh, compression setting there as well. I probably wouldn't play around with that. You can add USB creator URL. 
So what do these do? Make a distributable copy to share with friends, both CDFS and ISO will be created, max four gigs. Make distributable ISO file only, um, CD file system must have been completed already, max four gig. Make a distributable copy file system only, good if you wanna add files to the CD and remove temporary files. Live boot menu, PNG, and select boot menu picture for the installed environment. So I sort of, you got the output there so you can check the output when it's building, obviously. Um, I sort of have a little bit of an idea what's going on here, but um, <laughs> um, still probably, I'd have to mess around with it to see um, how that works. So you can put a username, you can label the CD and the file name. So I'm just wondering whether you can put many files to exclude here, I'm not sure. And the working directory here, for example, would be home Wolfland Builder. You can also put a, select a Plymouth theme. About Wolfland Builder 6.0-29. So let's close that. So that's an interesting project. We also got uh, Tampa, which is uh, weather. Uh, I'm not sure whether we can configure weather report. Um, let's choose, see if it finds my location. Perth, Western Australia, select. Appearance, oh yeah, apply that. Appearance, temperature, wind pressure, units will be Celsius. Pressure, uh, just leave that. I don't know pressure. <laughs> I'm not sure which pressure we normally look at. Kilometers per hour and visibility kilometers per hour. Apply that and about, okay. So let's see what's happening there. Perth, 32, fair enough. It's getting warm again. I've had a couple of nice days, now it's getting warm again. So yes, this is the neon, um, the neon uh, YT or whatever it was called for the icons. You got the dolphin manager there, um, help and about dolphin uh, 21.12. I'm not really sure what dolphin's normally up to, but being based on KDE Neon, I'd have to think uh, that would be pretty much up to date because Neon does update quite a fair bit. So back to Discover, let's have a quick look at that again. Um, settings, so I'd have to think because they've got uh, quite a few um, repos here, that's probably why it took quite a while to um, for that update to come through. And these updates are only as fast as the slowest repo, I suppose you could say. So if there's a really slow repo there, it's going to take its time, which is what it did. Uh, yeah, they've got the soft maker repo in there as well. Um, and also, what was it? The Brave Browser. Dead Snakes Ubuntu PPA Focal. So if we have a look at uh, applications, I suppose. Do a search for some of my favorites. See if they're there. Cherry Tree, and that's 0.99.44, so that's fairly up to date. Let's try Zoom, because we have got Flatpak and Snaps. So this is what I like about Discover. It, it, it shows you install from Flatpak. It, it just puts it out there, and there's no messing about. The only thing you need to look at is um, what, if you wanna know what version it is, you have to open that, but you can clearly see that that's from Snap, Zoom client, so, and they're out of the box and you've got the options to use whatever you want out of the box. I don't know why I keep doing that. Um, Telegram, let's have a look at that because I know these things come with uh, both snaps and flat packs. So there's the flat pack for Telegram. Um, snap, there's a snap there, but it's a CLI. Telegram, um, Normally it's Telegram dash desktop, which is what this one is. The dash desktop I would have thought is the 
standard client, uh, which is the case for Flatpak, but the snaps, I'm not sure about those for snaps, to be honest. Um, let's go for Audacity, and that's all we get for Audacity. So we've got Flatpak. So GIMP, let's have a look for GIMP. So um, my question is here, let's go to settings. What's, uh, you can make that default, but the Stormfish OS is the default. Now my question is, why doesn't the search bring up so my question here is, um, when searching through Discover, and this is the same with GNOME software and most of the other softwares, why isn't it finding anything, mainly finding snaps and flat packs, right? So if we want to find anything else, I would have to think that's why they've included Synaptic. Um, let's have a look. And this is no fault of Stormfish OS. This is just the way all the... Um, I've noticed all the software centers in Linux now working, they're mainly searching um, snaps and flat packs. Um, and they've got all these other repos there and they're not searching any of those repos. So if we, if we do a search for GIMP, oh, let's, do a, let's click on search first. GIMP, GIMP. See, the maintainers here is, uh, if you can read it, um, Ubuntu developers, right? So that probably comes from the Ubuntu repos. Universe. Available versions, 2.10.18-1, focal. Right, so, I mean, that's the only place you can find now is a Synaptic Package Manager. So the Synaptic Package Manager seems to be becoming a very popular application because people want to install some very simple things from the repos. <laughs> some people don't want everything to be flat packs and snaps, I suppose. Some things I prefer just from the repos because if I want to stay on that version, those if those repos are on a long-term support, they'll, they'll continue to stay on that version. So if we quickly go through all applications, Blue Recorder, oh, let's just open that. I don't know much about Blue Recorder. Videos, um, okay, that's where you save it. Uh, the file name, uh, saves in Matroska. Select a window, select an area, okay. So that reminds me of, um, oh, there's another video recorder I've seen which looks similar to this. Can't remember the name of it now. So you've got Synaptic Package Manager, Brave Browser, Firefox, so what? What version is Brave Browser? I'd have to think everything's up to date in this. Um, no, we don't want default at the moment. About Brave. Uh, version, what's that? 1.33.106 Chromium. And Firefox. Firefox is 95.01. So they've still got the installer showing here. Um, you'd probably think that would want to be removed after install anyway, you want to think. What have we got down here? Display configuration. So you can, um, I have don't have more than one screen, so it's not going to show anything. Advanced display settings. And that'll take us to the display settings. It's handy. Um, Osmo you got down here. Uh, for calendar tasks and so forth. Clipboard, volume, most recent device, networks, just the usual KDE stuff. And there's your calendar there. HTOP. So I have been opening quite a fair bit of stuff. Um, CPUs are very quiet. And we're running just over a gig of memory out of 8 gig. Info center. KDE Neon 5.23. Processors. So it's a virtual box anyway, so there's not going to be too much information there valid for the hardware. Office, let's just have a quick look at this Office here, um, free Office. Uh, please choose your preferred design. 
Um, what have we got? Ribbon. We've got different ribbons and different classic menus there. We'll just go with this default for now. We'll do plan maker. I'm not going to worry about filling that stuff in for now. Looks very nice and modern. Um, have we got an about somewhere? About free office. Free Office Plan Maker 2021 with some revision number there. So we tried the calendar, that worked. I'm not sure if it brings up notifications in any calendar anywhere else. I don't think so. Didn't show up here and it doesn't show up in Osmo anywhere. So that's just a very quick. So that's just a very quick reminder for yourself that you can, if you've got something you need to do and remind yourself, that's pretty handy. W get get them. I'm not sure what that'll come in handy for. Maybe I'm just not thinking out of the box right now, but um, I'm not sure what that would come in handy for. But I'm sure uh, some of the people involved in the project could probably let me know if they've used it for anything for themselves in in the comments below because I'd, I'd uh, I'd be interested to know what you use it for. So I think just a couple of things I didn't mention was your desktop, show desktop there and your HP status there. All right, so we're going to have a quick look at backgrounds, uh, configure a desktop and wallpaper. It's gonna see what wallpapers we have on the system. Some KDE stuff, some storm stuff, which makes sense. <laughs> storm with logo. So that Storm logo looks um, a little bit similar to one I've seen before. For um, That is the Storm OS logo, which I'm very familiar with. Storm OS. So these are the uh, wallpapers available in Stormfish OS. So HTOP on a fresh boot is running anywhere from 818 to 850, 860 something, back to 810. So it is varying a little bit. I don't know what's peaking the CPUs, probably checking for updates. It's definitely got to be looking for updates at the moment. That's probably why that's spiking a little bit. So now it's settled down. Now the CPUs are settled down and we're running 800 consistently on a fresh boot. So um, that looks a lot better. And it's just a quite a, just a fair bit of a spike in the CPUs there. No doubt the updates are running through on first boot, I would say. So we have the information on the console as well. Um, Uname dash R, I think it is. 511 kernel. Uname dash A. Okay, so I think I remember they said uh, there was. Uh, I'm gonna check out uh, this land share just quickly. I don't think I have anything to share with it. I don't know if it relies on anything else having this application available. Um, let's just check it out. Settings. Land share version 1.2.1. So if we send a file, um, let's send that, let's open it. Uh, select receiver. Okay, so we're going to have to see if there's a receiver available. Yeah, there's no receiver available at the moment. So that's why I cannot send anything. It did say they got the CFS Zen Tweaks Schedule at Manager for CPU increases performance. I'm not quite sure what that means. I've had a look at the kernel, but it doesn't seem to be anything special. Maybe that's something that runs in the background. I'm really not sure. CFS, kernel, I don't think there's anything to do with kernel in here. 
So that is Stormfish OS. Uh, plenty of other options on the website for other downloads for different ISOs to suit your needs. This one is the Office Edition, um, fairly straightforward out of the box. Has quite a few repos connected. Did take the update, took quite a while, so it did shut down, it did a Windows type update. Um, I didn't have to do the update at the time, but because it's a brand new install, I wanted everything up to date to give a fair representation of the distro itself. Um, but the update did take a little while, um, not as long as Windows would, but it did take a little while. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but there, you know, there was over a gig of updates, I think, so that's fair enough. Uh, there was quite a fair bit to update. So it's understandable that it does, does need a, a restart anyway. So if you like the look of Stormfish OS, I'll leave the link to their um, SourceForge website down below. You can click um, you can check out all their other ISOs. There might be something that uh, you find might be interesting for you. There's a gaming one, there's an office one and, and an arch one. A couple of XFCEs based on Ubuntu, a few based on KDE Neon. So if you want the latest and greatest um, KDE desktop, um, Stormfish OS will be the way to go. They've got other repos attached as well to keep it sort of up to date. I'm not sure if it's rolling. Um, I'd have to think um, if it's once it's installed, it will continue to update. I'm not sure about that. Um, I didn't find any information about that. But KDE Neon is not a distro itself. It's a testing ground, but it does I think, I think they do updates, I believe, um, new Releases, I think. I cannot remember now. Or was, or was KD Neon just constant? I cannot remember. So anyway, that was Stormfish OS. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.